Al Weissman, in a nutshell, we're back. We're having a really, really nice conversation today with Mike Aquino. And uh, he's been entertaining us with some of his music, which is really, really nice. Do you think you could kick off the second half hour with another tune? I would love to. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a ballad here. I'm, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm a big guitar player around town, and, but I do a lot of songwriting. and I like to write ballads. I don't know why, but okay. this is a really great song. It's called um, Every Mile. It's about uh, when you're away from someone for so long and you realize you're out there working, you're on the road, and uh, the person you're out there working for back home is worth every mile. So it goes something like this. So it's called Every Mile? Every Mile. Okay. Yeah. Tires whining, grease starting just to get to you. Lane changing, it's amazing. Time racing just to be with you. Bridges crossed and cities spade. I drive all night to hear you say my name. Cause you melt my heart with every move You make it dance, simple and true With every passing sign I'm getting close to your smile Let me tell you, girl, you're worth every mile stars just to get to you down shifting and I'm drifting sleepless hours just to be with you there's no road that I wouldn't take no distance great enough to make me lose my faith cause you melt my heart with every move You make it dance Simple and true With every passing sign I'm getting close to your smile Let me tell you, girl You're worth every mile And every day I will travel On any path Go to gravel Time and chip away and try to hold me down But I'm not turning around No, no Cause you melt my Tell you, girl, you're worth every mile. Every Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. How in the heck do you write something like that? You got to tell us a little bit about your process here. Well, it starts, it always starts with a hook line or an inspiration for something. You know, when you're inspired, the best inspirations come like like a flashpoint. Um, it could be the hook line. It could be a line that 
somebody texted you and you're like, oh, do you know what you just did? And then you start building the song around that. I'm, I write in a bunch of different ways. I tend to write choruses first because that's what will stick out in my head the most is like the true meaning of the song. And then I'll try to, to tell this, like, here's, here's the climax of the story. And then I'll build, and then I'll go back and write up from that. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, but you just have to be inspired by something or someone. And it comes in anything. It can be from something you see on the news. It can be from, um, take, taking a break at work and just looking around and seeing people. I like writing people songs and you just see how two people are together and it just inspires you to write something or you know it's it's really there's no magic there's no magic powder that makes it happen there's there's no fairy dust I was going to ask about that <laughs> <laughs> No that's called ca- uh, caffeine okay yeah right. I, I mean like is there a bed cave to which you retreat or uh... no i keep um it can happen anywhere i keep uh I keep a digital recorder with me all the time. If I hear a melody in my head, I'll sing it into it. Um, obviously, I can't play guitar when I'm driving, so I would. Just, it's usually I usually hear melody first. I I hear the hook line and the melody of the the lyric, and then start adding the music to it as soon as I can get to a guitar. Sometimes you can, like that song. Every mile was probably written in twenty five minutes. Wow. And other songs could be, you know, a couple days. And I'm I'm the type of person where I'm a firm believer. And if you have to force a song to come, it's it's not going to be that good. Uh-huh. If you have to force it, it's just not going to work. Um, that's one of the things from working with Jim Peterick, seeing how fast he writes. And usually that the first instinct when you're writing, that's it. You can always go back and hash over lyrics and really pick it apart and really tailor make the lyrics but as long as the melody and the idea of the song is there it's true and the best ones everyone says the same thing who writes songs the best ones are the ones that are written like that they're really? written just all of a sudden they're not labored over because if you're laboring over it then there's something really wrong with it you know it's like a good recipe you got the right ingredients. You just put them in when they're supposed to go in, and it's and let it done. No, oh, interesting. It yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. So you get ideas wherever you may be, wherever I may be. Yeah, um, talking into your recorder. I just yeah, I'll talk talk it into the recorder and go from there. Um, I there's a co-writer, uh, lyricist uh, Eve Hicks that uh, we've written a bunch of songs together. Great songs and. Um, she usually sends me <laughs> this long text of lyrics and I have to try to make sense of what the lyrics are saying. And if I really like what they're saying, then it's like I start moving stuff around and some, and then I'll start putting music to it. And, um, well, so she's a collaborator. Of she, yours. Yeah. She, yeah. An, an amazing lyricist. Yeah. She's great. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Do you collaborate with others besides her? Um, I've got a bunch of collaborations on the books coming up. Yeah, it's actually been, uh, I haven't done too much. I have written some stuff with Peterick. Um, I've collaborated a bunch with some of the other members in my bands throughout the years. Um, but I've got a bunch of other writers that, uh, were face me- Facebook messaging back and forth, trying to find dates to, to sit down and co-write some stuff and get some stuff happening so in between that and like the eight bands and and it's the calendar looks crazy <laughs> i don't even want to look at my calendar anymore it's i i wake up on monday morning and say what do i got to do this week <laughs> wow I, I noticed on your page you're, you're totally booked i mean you, there's no blank spaces on that thing. i want to say between now and the end of august um 62 shows Whoa. between now and the end of August. A lot of duo stuff, you know, a lot of acoustic duo, a lot of, but there's also a lot of band stuff. And that's pretty much, I think, with just about every band that I'm in. Some bands are more consistent than others and how often they work, uh-huh. you know, but uh, I try to make room for everyone and, and just 
thank you to all my the the guys and girls that I work with that are very understanding of me being in so many bands because lots of times I have to sub out of one band to go play with another band. Sure. You know, so what are the names of these eight bands you're with? If you can recall them, okay. that's a lot of material. I'll start. Okay, I'll start. Uh, my uh, local country band um, is a band called Lucky Town. Then I also play with uh, another local country artist. Well, she's she's from Chicago. Spent a lot of time in Nashville. Uh, that's Jessica Ray. Um, she's up here in Chicago again. I play with uh, a country and classic rock blues band um, out of the western suburbs called Junkyard Groove. Then there's Lisa McClowry, who is out of uh, the south suburbs. Um, I hooked up with her through Jim Peterick. She's one of the most amazing vocalists I've ever heard in my life. There's Susie Dobbs, which is a country artist out of Nashville, Tennessee. I've been working with her for almost 12 years now. Um, Billy Childers is a country artist out of Denver, Colorado. He moves around a lot, but he's now in Denver. See, so that makes six. And then there's Jim Peterick in World Stage. That's seven. Pride of Lions, which is another Jim Peterick thing. That's eight. Then there's Jim Peterick's Life Force. That's nine. Am I forgetting anyone? I I can't remember. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not forgetting right anyone. There it's, yeah, it's crazy. Well, you got your hands full, that's for sure. No, I do, yeah. But, you know, it's fe- feast or famine. Yeah, I yeah. hear you. Yeah, I know. So, I hear a lot of famine out there. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that there is. And thank you to all the bars that sometimes also pay us in free dinners. There you go. Yeah. Now, your your bio indicates that you recorded and shared the stage with uh, artists like Dan Navarro, Christian Chenoweth, Don, Barn, Dan, Don Barnes, Jimmy Van Zant, and a bunch of others. Can you tell us about some of those experiences? Oh, man. We got about a week. <laughs> um, but well, the one or two would be fine. Well, Dan Dan Navarro is one of my favorite guys to work with. He's from the Lowen and Navarro fame. You know, they they wrote the hit "We Belong," which Pat Benatar recorded. And Dan is one of the heavyweights in the the uh, folk alternative um, world of music, and. Okay. Um, I believe I was hooked up with him through Paul Braun and working with over at Chicago Street, uh, Chicago Street Theater and working with Dan is great because Dan is such a free spirit. Everything. He never wants anything to be the same way from show to show. He's like, if there's a part that's on a record that is definite has to be there, play it that way. Other than that, he's like, have fun with it. These things turn into jams. We, I play with him a lot and it's a lot of fun and. Don Barnes from 38 Special is, he is one of my heroes. Um, he's just a true Southern gentleman. Um, great musician. Still got his voice. Great guitar player. It's just a lot of fun. We sit down and just get to pick a little together. And Now that's um, got to be fun. And John, Johnny Van Zant from Skinner, getting to work with him and Donnie, his brother Donnie. Those two guys together are they should just go out on tour as a comedy act. It is hilarious. I've never laughed so hard in my life working with those guys. I, I love to watch profoundly good guitar players get together and pick and bounce off of each other. And... Oh, it's ridiculous. It is a lot of fun. And we're all sitting there saying, hey, what did you do there? What did you do there? I don't know. What did I do there? I have no clue. Did you record it? Yeah. Well, let me hear it back. I don't know what I did. <laughs> that's kind of that's how it always goes. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. Do you think you could play us another tune? I would love to play another song. Please. This is a a, a traveling song, um, like no other traveling song. It's a traveling song that was written again once I got it to like a cocktail napkin to start writing down the lyrics. Uh, I was at a bar outside. It was on a smoke break. Someone stole my lighter. So I asked for my lighter back. That person didn't have the lighter, but... Three people down the line had my lighter. Oh, there's your lighter. Uh, and, and this person goes, oh, here, here it is. See, pocket to pocket, hand to hand. And I said, what did you say? Pocket to pocket, hand to hand. I said, I'll be right back. And this song came out of it. Okay. It's called Little White Lighter. Pocket to pocket, hand 
a hand I started some fires I helped you make a few good friends I might be just a couple of bucks But I'm handy in a pinch Help you find your way in the dark I'll get you fixed and a cinch Cause I start on the first pole Leaving in the driving rain Light your flame, I'm your little white lighter. Started out in Hollywood in a bandit circle K. Headed my way east, road trip into Green Bay. And some trucker scammed me in a bar, and my home was his old Mac. But those 18 wheels could really fly And I never did look back And I start on the first pull Even in the driving rain There ain't no way I'm going out Not even in a hurricane Maybe small but I'm mighty There ain't no limit to my fire Like a good old friend who always lights your flame I'm your little white lighter And all the way to NYC I flew back to Chicago In a jacket and C10D I caught a Greyhound down to Memphis Hell, I lit up a show or two And then a couple of stops in Texas Yeah, I go everywhere with you And I start on the first pole Even in the driving rain There ain't no way I'm going out Not even in a hurricane Maybe small, but I'm mighty There ain't no limit to my fire Like a good old friend who always lights your flame Audience is going to the you. studio here. <laughs> Gotta love it. That is very, very lovely. Thank very you. nice. Now, your your Reverb Nation material, I believe, states that you're currently shopping songs in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, um, I kind of put that on hold for a little bit. Uh, you know, you have a daughter and you got to save money for college. But uh, sure. I have been, I have shopped songs in Nashville. Um, I still have a couple hookups down there. I send them something every now and then, and they shop it around for me a little bit. And that is that is one of the toughest markets to break into, but uh, what a fertile market for songwriting. And It's a great songwriting community, and just just to know every now and then that someone down there likes your song, your song enough to put it on hold yeah. it gives you a little hope. What do you do? You have, like... Contacts down there? and Yeah, usually the way that route goes is you hire someone down there called a song plugger. Okay, that makes sense. And they contract, you know, for however long the contract is and X amount of money, and they shop the songs around to the A&R people for different artists. So Okay. They probably do a little screening themselves. Yep. That's good. <laughs> and, and it said that um, your songs have caught the ears of artists like uh, Blake Shelton, Trace Atkins, and... Craig Morgan, is anything cooking with any of those folks? Um, probably be about five years ago, a couple of the songs that I wrote. Um, one of them that I, that I did, Panama, was uh, put on hold by uh, Dirk Bentley and, and Trace Atkins had a quick little hold on a couple of them. So um, they liked them enough to keep them on the short list, but then... 
the way things work, they ended up you know, sure. not making the final cut. But, sure. You know, sure. hey, every little step hey, is yeah, that's cool. Helps. You know, it's really cool that and um, guys like Keith Burns from Trick Pony. I played a few things for him. The last World Stage gig we did, he was on it with us, and and uh, he's an incredible writer. And uh, you know, he wrote the song "Poor Me" that they mm. did, and and he loved a bunch of the ones that uh, I wrote and. He's like, we got to write. So I've been sending him some stuff, seeing what he thinks of it. So, nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. How many, how many pieces uh, have you published? Do you have any idea? I, I'm not saying that quantity is necessarily an you indicative know, of anything. I don't anything, know. It's, but... it's not that many. I, the ones, the, 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 the stuff that you can hear, I mean, the stuff that you hear out, there's probably only like a handful, maybe six or seven songs that you would hear out on 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 the air or something like that but i'd say of songs that i've written that i've tried to get out there's probably 50 60 mm-hmm. which usually takes about a few hundred before you get one yeah <laughs> one one is i've been told you get that first hit and you take all the money you make from that and you stick it in the bank and sure. then you write the second hit to start living off of uh-huh <laughs> that's your 401k is that the first song sense. yeah that makes sense and you're you're working on an album now, yeah? Yeah, um, I've got an album on iTunes right now called Your Side of Town, and uh, but I since that record was pretty much completed, I've written and co-written probably another fifty songs since that, which in actuality is probably like three and a half CDs. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but you know the pro- the problem is you know you're you're a musician. This is by no stretch of the imagination is it a, a glorified life. You know, I mean, you're living hand to mouth on these on shows, making enough money to pay your bills and pay your mortgage, and so finding the money to actually go into the studio and record something properly is is tough. Sure, you I know? Bet. so best I do is I got a nice a nicer little di- digital recorder and. Just do a lot of acoustic and vocal songs and throw them in the computer, run them through a mastering program, and you can sell them at like little acoustic shows here and there and mm-hmm. try to save up a, a little money to go cut a song, and, which it's about time to really start getting on that again for me. There's a bunch of these songs that I've been doing that I really would like to have like a hard copy, a good hard copy, get a band in the studio and start going to town again. Mm-hmm. Fun, sure, but you have a, this. This is on iTunes now, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and people can go there. It's called Your Side of Town. Your Side of Town, right? Very um, cool. Easiest way to do it is just go to iTunes Store and search Mike Aquino Country. That's the best. That that's the quickest way it comes up. Okay, so all right, yeah. very cool. Can you play us another tune? I'd love to do you one more, or however many. This is a funny one. This is one that uh, I always like slick songs with humor that actually have a good meaning to them as well. And I was playing a festival somewhere in Illinois, and I didn't want a beer, and everyone else in the band was going to the beer tent to get a beer, and I gave in, and I said, I'm giving in to beer pressure. <laughs> so uh, this one's called Beer Pressure. Here it goes. Okay. Uh, First step to changing my ways was to walk the other side. Smoke and neon Blinding my eyes I couldn't see through the glass That it was closing time The furthest I've been From the bottle Is the stage In this old ballroom I thought I had it lit Wasn't too hard to quit Till you walked in with somebody new I spent half Turning me to stone There won't be a 
told me not to hang around you no more Even changed my name, shut my number down A brand new address in a different town Caffeine pills and coffee Don't really seem to scratch my itch But in a moment of doubt My willpower went south You were back up to your old tricks I spent half my life with you by my side Lord, how I miss it, I won't tell no lies Like a long yet one deuce will turn to me to stone That old beer pressure keeps you half a dozen steps from gone Ah, here she comes again, baby To my redemption Was to renounce your hold on me But every time I try I just can't say goodbye You were willing to set me free I spent half my life With you by my side Lord, how I miss you I won't tell no lies Like a long neck Medusa turning me Oh, thank you so much. Nice, very nice. Now, if someone wanted to retain your services for an event, Mm -hmm. a gig, a party, whatever, how would they contact you? Well, the best way to contact me is um, I do have a website. It's a little out of date. It just needs to be updated. But you can go to micaquino.com, and uh, you can email me through, through there. Always look me up on Facebook. There's a I, I do have a music page on Facebook. Um, Mike Aquino Music. You can send me a message through there, <clears throat> or if you already got my number, text me. There's still holes in the schedule. Quick, <laughs> <laughs> my daughter needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say thank you so very much for coming on in a nutshell. Thank today. you, Alan. Thank you very much. It was I a pleasure it. having you. It was a blast. Your Let's music is again. dynamite, man. I love thank it. You. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. And good luck to you. And um, maybe we can have you back on the show sometime or another. Absolutely, I would okay. love to come back. Very cool. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right.